I'm clearly not Diana Moore, who unfortunately cannot make it tonight. Before I give my lecture as a professor of statistics, I'd like to put on my hat as the Dean of Graduate School of Arts and Sciences to invite all of you to the Harvard Horizon Symposium on April 5th, Tuesday evening, 6 o'clock in Center Theater, where there will be eight graduate students present a very similar type of talks, a TED type of talks, and each will be given five minutes. And I particularly want to invite this group because you will be the one to be able to judge the quality of the student presentation versus the quality of the faculty presentation. <laughs> and particularly you will see, statistically speaking, on average, the students have a much better understanding of the concept of five minutes. <laughs> now wanting, now wanting to be outsmart my fellow colleagues, which is not a good thing for deans to do, I will do my best not to follow the five to seven minutes limit. <laughs> so here's my lecture, Marriages the Last. Many of you must be wondering what a statistician can say about a marriage. Other than that the success rate of remarriage is statistically significantly lower than that of the first marriage. Sad, but that's true. Indeed, I never thought about the connections between statistics and marriage until about five years ago when I was approached by a young scholar during a statistical conference. He got my attention with a line that a few academians can resist. I really enjoy your writing. <laughs> Take a note of that. That's a good line. But his next line was truly unexpected. Your article saved my marriage. Wow, I didn't know my writing could be this powerful. <laughs> Naturally, I was very curious. Oh, which article? Remember the parking problem you wrote about? He reminded me. Now I was even more curious. Yes, but how? I'm sure I have just piqued your curiosity too. Statistics, marriage, and parking? <laughs> it's like trying to cross Broadway with Downing Street and it's still somehow intersecting the Tiananmen Square. <sighs> now how could you pull that off? What is that about? To just keep the suspense a little bit longer, let me take a detour <laughs> to continue the theme of a crossroads on something else I did as a statistician that ultimately led to a happy wedding in this very church. About a decade ago, I started to offer a course later known as my happy course, Real Life Statistics, Your Chance for Happiness or Misery. You know, I'm a very responsible professor. I make sure my students will get one out of these two. Depends how they do. <laughs> It was a course intended to showcase how statistical insights work in real life. And, there, and hence, I used many real life stories, including my own. There are actually very few fundamental statistical insights. And one of them is the so-called bias variance trade-off, also known as a efficiency trade-off. In layperson's term, it says that if you want the method to work really very well for a particular case, that is to be efficient, then it, won't, it will not be very applicable in general. Conversely, if you want the method to be applicable in general, namely to be robust, then it is unlikely to do very well for a particular case. That is, there's no free lunch. You must make a choice. When I start to use the Broadway garage just down the road, which has seven floors, I naturally parked on the first parking space available when I arrived in the morning. This was an efficient strategy in terms of minimizing the walking distance on the stairs, but its efficiency depended on crucial, a crucial assumption that I would remember on which floor I parked when I returned in the evening. 
Now you see where the parking comes from. After walking up and down on the stairs many times in late evening, I laughed at myself for forgetting the robust efficiency trade-off. There's a much more robust strategy that is always parking on the seventh floor, which was never full in the morning. Apparently, the young fellow who approached me and his wife were frustrated by a similar parking problem for their shared car. They had some childcare issues that required them to return to it often several times a day, depending on who happened to have some squeezable moments. But then they often couldn't locate quickly where the car was parked by the other, and it became almost a daily ritual for them to blame each other for the time wasted. <laughs> As the frustration escalated from the parking lot to bedroom, my young friend was delighted to discover the simple solution offered by, in my article. And they have lived, lived happily ever after. <laughs> or at least I hope. Of course, as a statistician, I would not make any scientific claim without having at least two cases. <laughs> if, you have a, if you have been paying attention to this forever lasting lecture, you should recall that my happy course ultimately led to a happy wedding in this very church. Yes, that took place on October 5th, 2013. And if you check Memory Chase's logbook, you might be surprised to find out who officiated the wedding. Yes, the statistically yours. <laughs> the happy couple were members of my happy team, a group of graduate students in statistics who helped me to design and teach the happy course. I took both of them to Shanghai as my teaching fellows for a summer course version of the happy course, and they fell in love with each other during that trip. I can spend hours to tell you how they fell in love. It's a great story, but I, I only have 20 minutes. Um, <clears throat> probably wanting to thank me for being an accidental matchmaker, three years later, they asked me to officiate their wedding. I, of course, won't waste my opportunity, any opportunity, to preach about statistical insights. And this time, it was the universal law of a regression towards the mean, <laughs> which in a simple term is that when something is high, it has a tendency to go low, and vice versa. Let me cite a part of my preaching then, especially for those of you who might need it now. Quote, statistically speaking, when two people fall in love to the degree they decide on marriage, their expectations of each other and indeed of themselves, are extremely high. Some of these expectations are a reflection of reality and hence sustainable. But others are idealizations, or what we statisticians will call a model. But nobody can be a model 24-7, not even a supermodel. <laughs> the real trouble is that whereas we all, we all give ourselves a little slack, when we fail to meet our own expectations, we tend to be much less forgiving when others fail to meet ours. The law of regression toward the mean tells us that disappointment is inevitable when we start with extremely high expectations. I'm not suggesting that in order to maintain a healthy marriage, you have to try everything under the sun to live up to your soulmate's expectation. That's not sustainable. And that is exactly the essence of the law of regression toward the mean. What I do suggest is that every time you feel the urge to launch a major complaint about your soulmate because she or he has become so different from the person you fall in love with, pause for a second. Just ask yourself if it is just possible that the she or he feels the same way or even more so about you. So my advice for maintaining a good marriage is, be yourself, but put yourself in your spouse's shoes once in a while. A ring is a perfect symbol for regression toward the mean. Because whereas any ring is ex expected to be a perfect circle mathematically, 
a close inspection would almost always reveal some charming individualities. It therefore symbolizes our common desire for perfect love, but it also reminds us that to love perfectly, we must accept each other for who we are." Unquote. And I hope you all would accept what I'm trying to convey tonight. That is, inspirations and the solutions in life often come from unexpected sources. I also hope I have given you a helpful line for your marriage or relationship. Honey, it's not me, it's a regression toward me. <laughs> Joking aside, as a statistician, I'd be very delighted if your memories of the two fundamental statistical insights I taught you tonight would be as lasting as your longest marriage or relationship. Thank you very much. Thank you.